Smokers, folks, this ain't no dang jokers. This is a big, big video here today. We're getting into 10 stocks, just 10 stocks that are $15 or below that I believe immensely in over the next several years, okay? And these 10 stocks are, are not just cheap stocks that I think uh, should be forgotten about. I think these are 10 stocks to buy, at least in my opinion, right now and, and basically hold these stocks for the next several years because I think a lot of these stocks have phenomenal futures in front of them. Okay, now three things I want to cover before we get into this video and I share these 10 stocks with you in this video, which by the way, is a huge video because I know a lot of people have been wanting me to talk about a lot of the small cap stocks and just do a video where I'm, I'm basically talking about what stocks I think are the best deals and those sorts of things. So that's this video, but three things I wrote down that I want to cover before we, we get into this, okay? First thing is, all these stocks have flaws. Like, you don't become a stock that's under $15 unless you have flaws, okay? And by the way, just so you're aware, every single stock in this entire stock market has flaws. I don't care what stock it is. If it's a huge, big beast company, they're right for disruption. If it's a, a, a great growth stock, a lot of times you can bring up valuation. If it's a low price stock like these small caps, you can say, well, they maybe haven't been public for that too long, Coach, some of these companies have only been public for a year or less than a year. There's always going to be flaws, and when you're talking about stocks that are $15 or below, you're going to find flaws, okay? And so I think you've got to understand that is a risk with making any investment is every single stock has flaws, and if you're under $15, of course, there's going to be flaws there, okay? Number two, this, these stocks I'm sharing with you, if we were to put these 10 stocks in, let's call, their, let's call it the Jeremy ETF, okay? And these 10 stocks were in there, all right? Which these are, you know, some of these stocks I hold, some of these stocks I don't hold. But if I was, if we were just put this all in one big ETF, okay, this will outperform the S and P 500 over the next one year, in my opinion, and over the next three years. I'm recording this video December 14th, 2021, and I think if we come back and look a year from now at this video and we say, okay, what did these stocks do over the past year? I can say this is a group of stocks will outperform the S&P 500 over the next one year, which I don't make a lot of short-term predictions around stocks and, and those sorts of things. So for me to say that, I'm, I'm pretty darn confident, okay? Not only that, but I'm very, very confident that this group of stocks will outperform the S&P 500 over the next three years, all right? And so I want to I wanna say that. And the last part here before we get into these 10 stocks that are $15 or below that I think are buys now is... The past does not mean the future. This is more for newer investors or if anybody comes across this video that's like a newer investor, new to the markets, and you look and you're like, oh, this stock price is down a lot. Oh, it's a bad stock. It's not the way this works at all. You know, if uh, there's a lot of people last year at the same exact time that were just starting to get in the market and we're looking at a stock price is going crazy and they thought that was going to continue and then that ended real, real quick, right? And it ended in uh, obviously shambles. So yeah, hope you guys enjoy this video. As always, make sure you hit that subscribe button if you enjoy videos like this. All I cover on my YouTube channels is like stocks I'm buying, stocks to buy. Uh, we cover obviously things that are going on in the stock market. It's a very stock market focused channel. So yeah, make sure you hit that subscribe button. And if you want to be notified every time a video drops, you can hit that as well. Also, we have a free seven day trial going on right now for my private stock group. So if you want to check that out before it ends, check out the pinned comment down there. All right, guys, let's get into these 10 stocks. All right. First one up here of these stocks, $15 or below that I think are, are stocks to buy now is a company named Purple Innovation, PRPL. So this is a company that makes many different bedding products, mattresses, mattress toppers. They make uh, pillows. Uh, they make even like sheets and blankets, things like that. Okay. So if there's anything in, in relation to bedding, a company, they have uh, big, big uh, warehouses and, and facilities, factories in Utah, and uh, as well as some others. And so this is a company that has been a really good growth company over the last many years, okay? But they have had a, a troubling kind of past year, let's put it that way, as stimulus money went away and uh, there was kind of a reset on their sales. And uh, they, they also had, uh, you know, some some internal issues with the company. So there was a bunch of stuff that went, went on. And so that's one of the reasons the stock has fallen so dramatically, okay? It's a $612 million market cap. I do believe this is a growth company in 22 and beyond. And I believe it will be a business that's very profitable. Now, the downside of a company like Purple is a very competitive space, okay? Okay. The, the bedding, you know, sheets, blankets, pillows, uh, mattresses, all those sorts of things, very, very competitive. However, when you look at that market, there aren't a lot of companies that have extremely strong brands. There's probably like four or five brands I can think of off the top of my head out of like hundreds of companies. So most companies that compete in this space are trying to do it in a way that they're trying to sell the cheapest thing possible, right? And so 
the most quantity possible, and it's not really about brand. For a company like Purple, they have really built a, a brand that is well known in this space, and I think will you know just get bigger and bigger over the coming years. So yeah, that's a stock I look at that I think uh, you know definitely if I was to put it in a, a category, I'd put it more in the stocks to buy category than anything else. And I think this stock will do very well over the next one year and three years overall. And if you look at their balance sheet, they're they're in a pretty good spot. Okay, so yeah, that's Purple Innovation, first company of these ten companies, the second stock of these ten stocks. If you're a follower of my channels you knew you knew this one was there's no way i was going to do a video about 10 stocks 15 dollars or below and not mention the chef okay tdcf so this is my highest conviction play if you're gonna if we're gonna talk about you know what's what's the one i have the most money in of any of these stocks on this list right you're looking at it right there, TTCF. I have seven figures in the stock. This is a stock I believe immensely in over the coming years. Why do I believe immensely in it over the coming years? Plant-based food space is going to, you know, 4X or more over the next eight or nine years. So the market they compete in, plant-based foods, this is a market that is just growing exponentially pretty much year after year after year and will continue to as far as I can see around the world. And it's not like this is just a United States story, right? They have massive SKU expansion going on. They're getting into every single retail you want to get into. When you get into a new retail, you get in with a few SKUs, right? And in the future here, they're going to get in with a lot more SKUs. SKUs meaning more and more products, all right? And so they have all these new revenue opportunities, and they're going to get into more products past just frozen foods. In 22, they want to launch snack products. They want to launch meal replacement bars, nutritional bars, all those sorts of items as well, and refrigerated items as well, and even other frozen categories, such as like handheld burritos and whatnot they've mentioned, okay? And so... Tattoo Chef is a massive growth company that is growing into a massive growth category, right, in, in regards to plant-based foods. And so everything, like Tattoo Chef is just in a, in a position, the chef I call it, it's in a position of power for the next, you know, many, many years. And so that's why I think the stock's going to be a great stock over the next three, five years is why I've invested so much money. You know, I, I don't, I don't speak positively this positively about a stock unless I put my money where my mouth is. And I've put my money where my mouth is in the stock. It's a $1.3 billion market cap. I think this is going to be a five, $10 billion market cap long term. And uh, it's just a matter of time. And then big money's coming to the stock. Analysts are coming to the stock. There's a new analyst that just started covering the stock this past week, which is huge. That makes it three analysts now covering the stock. And I think by this time next year, it'll be five or 10 analysts. This will become more of a known company, especially as it has revenue scale, more analysts cover this company, okay? It'll begin to get more known from big investors, hedge funds. Uh, it'll get started getting included in more ETFs, maybe even plant-based ETFs over time, which is going to be uh, you know a, a huge thing for this company because it'll just be a new flood of money into the stock. And then you have hedge funds and big investors finding out about the company simultaneously. And so yeah, yeah, it's a company I'm just I'm, I'm thrilled to be a buyer of. It's a company I believe in so much. Not, like I said, not just over the next one year when it comes to this company, over the next two years three years, four years, five years, I believe so much in this company. And uh, yeah, uh, obviously I'm extremely bullish on that one. So that's the second of these 10 stocks. The third of these 10 stocks, another food company, but a different player. They're more of a fast food company, or you can even call them maybe a quick casual, but they're, they're a little more to fast, fast food than quick casuals. El Pollo Loco, Loco, okay? So this is a stock that, so it's, it's a $13 stock here today, $489 million market cap. When it comes to Loco, this is a very profitable business model. If you look at the profits expected, this business model, you know, extremely impressive. Low growth, though. It's not, this is not, you know, this is not a tattooed chef that just had 43% revenue growth last quarter, okay? El Pollo Loco will probably grow revenues next year, maybe 4%, something like that. So it's not an exciting growth company, but it's a profit. It's a profitable business model. It's not a super high forward P. It's maybe at a 15 or something like that. And this is a company I look at that's just a solid business. Now, when it comes to El Pollo Loco, I think this is a potential buyout candidate. Okay, I think there's a high probability that Loco will be bought out very, very recently. A, a company, Taco, Del Taco, they just got it bought out by Jack in the Box. And if I look at El Pollo Loco and I'm looking at this market cap uh, uh, under, you know, half a billion dollars, I think there's a high probability that a big, a big, you know, player, maybe even a, a private equity company ends up buying out Loco at some point in the next couple of years for probably a pretty hefty price. Worst comes to worst, they don't get bought out. I still think that the stock will be a, a pretty good, pretty good stock because there's a need for their, their, their products in the market. They obviously put up numbers. They're profitable. 
and um, they're expected to have you know growth. It's not exciting growth, but it's growth nonetheless. And the valuation is not crazy at a forward P of about 15, uh, 15 or so. Okay, so yeah, local. That's number three of these ten stocks that I feel like are stocks to buy. Next one up here, number four of ten, H N S T, the Honest Company. So. Not his company. This is another one that, uh, you know, I'm investing heavily in right now. 781 here today, $710 million more cap. They make diapers, baby wipes. They make soaps and shampoos, all those sorts of things. They make cleaning products and uh, many other various products that are, uh, let's call them more household related products. Company is a, a growth engine. Probably going to grow revenues, I would say, 10% to 15% next year in 2022. Expected to get to profitability in 23 and and uh, to much bigger profits in 24 from everything I've looked at in regards to this company. A devastated stock went public in the past year, which has just been a bad year for these sorts of companies to go public. I mean, because essentially what you had happen is you had all the, the retail investors flush into the market November, December of, of 2020 into January and February of 2021. And then all those investors obviously started to leave the market, get devastated, and uh, the bubble started to pop, right? And this company went public roughly around May. So everybody was already gone, and this is one of those stocks that really relies on a lot of the, the, the smaller investors to be buying it up. And, you know, it was just a really bad time to go public. They were late to the game, and obviously the company's just fallen, fallen, fallen. I do look at this company, and I think this is going to be a multi-billion dollar market cap within the next three to five years. Meaning two billion, three billion, four billion. If you look at you know well, what this stock should be, it should be a twenty plus dollar stock here over the next few years. And so the Honest Company, I feel like it's one of the safer stocks of these this bunch of stocks we're getting into. The the balance sheet's in a really good place from after they went public, and so. The, the brand's very, very strong. They have good relationships with companies like Amazon, Target, Costco. So, yeah, I think they're in a really, really good spot for the next many, many years. And that's the fourth of these 10 stocks that I feel like are stocks to buy, okay, for 2022 and beyond. Oatly, next one up here. So, Oatly, O-T-L-Y. This could be one I personally start buying at some point uh, within the next couple months. When it comes to Oatly, $8 stock here today, $4.85 billion market cap. They're disrupting the dairy industry, essentially. And uh, doing so in a, in, a, in a massive way over the coming years. They make oat milk products. They make yogurts. They make ice creams. They're getting into many other various products. Just think about anything that's dairy related. They're going to likely try to disrupt it over the next decade. And there's a company that has extremely strong sell-throughs. An unbelievable brand they've built in such a short amount of time. And uh, they're basically just trying to get production scaled as much as, as possible over the next several years. If I look at this business model... You know, this is one of those companies that I don't see them ever not growing revenues over the next decade. This is going to be, it's just a question of do they grow 10%, 20%, 30%, 40% per year. This is going to be a huge revenue growth beast for as far as I can see. Not only that, this business is going to be extremely profitable in my opinion. Uh, You know, drink companies are some of the you know more profitable business models, especially once you scale. And this company is going to get to massive scale over the coming years. And I, I just look at this business model as kind of being in a sweet spot with a great brand. And so this is one of those stocks I look at and I'm like, man, I, I'm going to end up having to be a buyer of this stock because, yeah, it's hard not to be excited about Oatly when you really start to research this brand and, and the type of opportunity they're going after. It's absolutely massive, okay? Six stock of these 10 stocks up here is Planet 13, so Plana is $3.15 here a day. This is a uh, cannabis play. And essentially, they have these super stores they build that are, I call them like the Disneyland of uh, cannabis, essentially, okay? And when it comes to Planet 13, it's not just about the store expansion and, and making these super stores and even smaller format stores. It's really about their branded revenue growth. So they own many various brands. So if you do some research on this company, you're going to find they own many various brands. And a lot of these brands are, are selling unbelievably well at their superstores, okay? And these brands will expand more and more over the coming years. Federal legalization is likely going to come in this space over the next few years. And so... A company like The Planet is in a sweet spot. It's a $600 million market cap. Their balance sheet's ridiculous. I mean, this is a company that, that you know usually has anywhere from $50 million to $125 million of cash, depending upon the quarter and, and you know how they're deploying money out there and whatnot. So they've got a great balance sheet. 
they, they have great growth. Like if you look at the analyst estimates for their growth over the coming years, like this is one of those companies that should be able to grow 40% plus a year for many years to go in the future. I don't see that slowing down anytime soon. And if you think about how profitable this space is going to be long term, it's going to be ridiculous. So this is one of those stocks, you know, I look at as, you know, you buy it. You throw it in the filing cabinet and you don't look at it for the next few years. And if anything, you buy more shares and you buy more shares and you throw it in the filing cabinet. The management team at this company is unbelievable. And, and, and these folks have dealt with uh, you know, a lot of folks in, in relation to regulators and, and states and, and you know, lo localities, which is very, very important when you're thinking about an industry that you're trying to expand into where things are still federally illegal, right? So this one, I just look at as a massive growth engine for as far out as I can see. Like, when does a planet stop growing? Like, I don't know, but it's no time in the next decade. That's all I know. And so this is one of those stocks that's just going to continue to be a beast for a long time to go in the future. And I watched what happened with this business model when, uh, you know, Roni Rona started when they only had one superstore open at that particular time. They're in a bad spot and the management team got them out of the worst, the worst possible scenario happened and the management team got the business model out and they, they pivoted to delivery, a curbside pickup, online services, and I've been nothing but unbelievably impressed with this company, and I have full faith in that management team. And it's hard to find you know, companies that are under a billion-dollar market cap that you really truly have full faith in. I've got full faith in the planet over time, okay? So, yeah, six of these 10 stocks. Seven of 10 is this one, Smile Direct Club, SDC. $2.53 stock here today, under a billion-dollar market cap. This is a needs-based company, like Clear Liners. And, uh, you know, different teeth straightening products. These are, these are needs-based products, right? Like tons of people need these or want these products. And they only have one major competitor who's been tearing it up, Align, L L A L G N. Align Technology is amazing. Align Technology is like, if I recall, a $50 billion plus dollar mark cap, okay? Smile Direct Club never has to become Align Technologies, nor should we ever expect Smile Direct Club to ever become Align Technologies. If they ever do, and it's like a 50, 60, 70, $80 billion mark cap, great, okay? But... That's not what I expect. That's not why I'm investing in a stock. This is a stock I'm actively buying right now. Like literally, I think I bought some shares here today and I should probably do a really in-depth video at some point on Smile Direct Club that really goes super in-depth on the stock. But, you know, Smile Direct Club, this is one of those companies that I don't know, you know, when they stop growing, I don't see them, uh, you know, not growing in 22. I think they're going to have very nice growth, double digits in 22. I think 23 is going to be a double digit plus year. I think 24 is going to be a double digit plus year. This is a business model that was disrupted from Roni Rona and everybody wearing masks, so the need to get your teeth straightened went down, right? Not only that, but then you've obviously had an inflation on the middle class that, that hurt, uh, obviously, Smile Direct Club. That will, you know, inflation's definitely going to calm down and maybe even go into deflation at some point in 22, okay? So that's going to go away. And also, when it comes to this business model, they were disrupted from basically the changes that Apple's had in basically how you could advertise on Facebook and those sorts of things. So they had to kind of work through that. So they've had all this drama they've had to work through, but they're investing for growth into the future. And it's not a type of business model I'm going to expect to be profitable over the next couple of years. I expect them to lose money in 22 and lose money in 23. But what I think is going to happen is they're going to lose less money in 22 and even less money in 23 and then likely start making like a small profit in 24 and 25. Meanwhile, still have this unbelievable growth. And that's how you get this, this market cap up to a $2 billion, $3 billion, $4 billion, $5 billion market cap. Then as a market cap starts to increase, then it makes it easier for you to raise money if you need to raise money as well, which is huge if they need to pay off any debt or if they just, uh, you know, looking to, you know, invest in the business and growth, 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 right? And so... Also, they're making partnerships with uh, a lot of uh, you know dental offices now and things like that, which I think is big because Align's always had this competitive advantage um, where basically they're in with the dental offices, right? And so if you're a dentist, you're very, very incentivized to promote Align because you're going to make direct money from that. Why would you promote Smile Direct Club unless it's out the goodness of your heart, right? You're, you're in business. You're a dentist. You're in business at the end of the day, right? You're there to make money. And so it's very easy for you to say, hey, I want to get a cut of this Align. Why not sell them a line, right? And so it's very, very intelligent that Smile Direct Club's trying to work with, with dental offices and opening up their own stores as well, which I think is very, very important, their own smile shops, okay? Plus, lastly, they're also building out 
uh, like toothbrushes, toothpaste, all those sorts of products, like overall dental care, you can find a lot of their products now on Amazon. So if you go on to Amazon and you just type in Smile Direct Club, that's big, okay? They're also going to try to get into many of the other big retailers as well, which I think has a, has a pretty good probability, okay? Now, the reason that's big is not just for it's a new revenue driver and potentially a, a very, very profitable business because we know selling toothpaste and toothbrushes and those things are usually very, very profitable, right? It's not just that. And so if you see that, those products on store shelves, right? You get even more familiar with Smile Direct Club. So it's a smart branding move. I think it's extremely intelligent in Smile Direct Club, but I think that's one of those things. It's not going to show up in the numbers right now, but over the next several years, I think it's going to show up in the numbers in a, in a major, major way. So yeah, that's the seventh of these 10 stocks, $15 or under that I think are stocks to buy. Next one up here, Voyager Digital. Voyager Digital, okay? Voyager Digital is a company that is a crypto brokerage. They just launched a debit card product as well. They Ultimately, what they want to become, if you listen to Steve, the CEO talk, he wants to become a stock brokerage over time. He wants to have even credit card products. They, they're talking about even banking-related products, talking about ways you could swap your crypto for, for stocks without having to go through actually USD, right, dollars. And so this is a company that's been a phenomenal growth engine they're usually very, very highly ranked on the finance uh, app store in, in the finance category. It's $11 stock here today, under $2 billion mark cap. Their balance sheet's in a pretty dang good place. Unbelievable growth for this business model. The only thing I look at for Voyager is they got to continue to work on their customer support and their customer service. If they can do that, that's kind of the final pillar. And then they just keep moving and launching new products. I think it just becomes a fintech beast over the coming years. And this ends up growing into a $10 billion, $20 billion mark cap. But I think the most immediate thing is they get better customer service, better customer support. And if they do that, it's one of those companies that's in a spot that I'm like, the world is theirs, okay? Now, also, I don't think it's out of the realm of possibility for let's say uh, other big banks or, or companies that are looking to get crypto exposure to maybe buy out Voyager Digital over the coming years, it could definitely be a possibility. Imagine you're a company, a bank or whatever, right? It, or even a big stock brokerage and you're not really in the crypto space, but you want to get in the crypto space. Why not buy out Voyager Digital, a big player in the crypto space, right? And so, yeah, Voyager Digital, definitely one I think is a very, very attractive. The risk, like I said, we obviously talked about customer support. The other risk is if there's a multi-year bear cycle in crypto, that's not going to be good for Voyager Digital. They're less exposed than other companies in terms of they're a smaller company, so they could eat into market cap of other big, big companies like Coinbase and many others, right? But... You can't deny the fact that if there's a multi-year bear cycle for crypto, that, uh, that drives a lot of people away, and that would be bad for Voyager Digital, okay? So that's eight of these 10 stocks up there. That, that one definitely has huge potential if they execute and uh, they don't get into a multi-year bear cycle for crypto, okay? Number nine of 10 up here is a company named Hims or Hers. I was pitched a stock very recently, about a $5 stock here a day. Not one I'm directly invested in yet. This is a company uh, that, I, you know, it's about a billion dollar market cap. You look at their growth, it's extremely impressive. And they, they do have a pretty uh, interesting story around this company. And they sell a lot of products, essentially, that people are maybe a little shy to ask their doctors about. And you can do a little research into the products they sell, okay? I'll let you guys go ahead and do that. And you're going to find, like, a lot of those products, like, and especially, uh, you know, a lot of them are aimed at men. Some are aimed at, at, at women as well. But a lot of them are aimed at men. And there's just a lot of those products are things that men are embarrassed to to ask for for their doctors. Or if they don't have a doctor, they like to just order something like that through a company like Hims, okay? And uh, it's kind of on DL. And so this is a company that has been a, a nice growth, a very nice a nice growth engine. And there's a, there's a story around the stock that is around telehealth, Okay. Now, that story I haven't fully bought into yet. I'm really trying to decipher if that's a real, in, you know, potential for this company is really looking at this as like a telehealth company, not not in relation to like a teledoc, right, which is a, a different competitor in the market. They're not even really a competitor to teledoc, and I don't think you should look at this one as a competitor to teledoc. It's just whether this is one of those companies that can continue to grow and thrive over time and become a place that people look at and they say, hey, this is something I want to order different products from. And maybe over time, over the coming years, if they execute you know, on a, on a high enough level, maybe they could become a overall telehealth company, right? Where people really view this as like, it doesn't matter what you need for physical health or mental health. You go to, to this company for that. We'll see how all that plays out over time. I wouldn't get too excited, but at the end of the day, it's a, it's a pretty dang cheap stock. 
And uh, when you look at their growth rates, it's, it's pretty darn exciting. And it's uh, one of those business models you look at and you're like, man, this is going to be a, a, a very profitable business model likely long term. Okay. So that covers HIMS. Nine of these 10 stocks. Last one up here of these 10 stocks. And let me know in the comments uh, you know, if you like these 10 stocks, if you like any of these stocks, or if there's any other stocks that are $15 or under that I should have included on this list. I would love to hear from you guys as always. Okay. Last one up here is Avant Brands AVTBF. Uh, this is the cheapest stock of the bunch. I saved the cheapest stock for the last 18 cents, $37 million mark cap here. Another cannabis play, high growth, <laughs> no pun intended. Look at their growth rates over the past year or so. And uh, this is a company that I don't think is going to stop growing anytime soon. They're working out deals for exports as well out of Canada. And so... This is one of those companies I think is going to build into a, a high-end player in the cannabis space and maybe even expand into uh, many other countries over time and maybe even come over to the States over time. And like I said, the market cap is so dang depressed, it's hard to see anything but maybe uh, upside in 22 and beyond. And this is one I'm personally investing in as well. Hope you guys enjoyed this video here today, guys. Like I said, if you want to check out my private stock group, know all the stocks I'm buying, all, all, all the moves I'm always making in the market, check out the, for a free seven-day trial down there pin comment as well as that gets into all the course curriculums essentially it gets into you know the coaches and looking into stocks we do our, our you know every week we look into different stocks and things like that guys in the private discord chat much love as always and have a great day hope you enjoyed